I've now played a ton of Star Wars Jedi Survivor, trying out all the different lightsaber stances, so I want to rank them from worst to best in this video. These are my general recommendations to anyone playing the game, but your top 5 can of course be different. Curious to hear about your favorites as well, so share yours in the comments and let's go. Starting out at number 5, we have the Crossguard Saber, which hurts a little bit to put it at the bottom of the list because it's actually one of my favorites, but hear me out, okay? While like any saber stance, the Crossguard has the potential to be very powerful, it takes a lot of work from you, more so than any of your other available options. Your strikes are slow and you don't have much in the way of gap close, so both timing and positioning are really important to get right. You'll also need to watch enemies closely as locking into an attack animation as they are about to hit you means there's nothing you can do to avoid the damage. Now you will be dealing a lot of damage yourself as the crossguard saber is the highest damage stance in the game. Whereas other stances need multiple hits to break the guard of a scout trooper commander, so the one with the orange shoulder pad, the cross guard only needs one to break and then one to kill the trooper. And it's great against shield troopers as with the rending strike skill unlocked, you can charge an extra powerful swing by holding the attack button that breaks their shields in one hit. So while it ultimately leads to a very rewarding playstyle if you manage to get all this right, again, it's one of my favorites, it's not the easiest stance to master. It's also kind of limited when it comes to dealing with groups because multiple enemies hitting you at once of course means it's even more difficult to pick the right time to attack yourself. There are some skills that can remedy this a bit, like Sundering Swipe that has you perform a sweeping attack to hit more than one target in front of you. It's still slow, but at least allows you to hit multiple enemies. But the biggest game changer to get for this stance is the Impact skill, which lets you send out a ranged shockwave by pressing triangle or Y after a jump. We already covered this one in our best skills video, which I will link to in the video description, but it gives you a ranged attack that can also knock enemies back and opens them up for follow-up strikes. It can even hit multiple enemies at once, so it does cover the crossguard's weakness against groups too. You need force energy to perform this move though, so you can't spam it, meaning that even with the skill unlocked, I think the crossguard saber can be a bit hard to get into. The fourth stance on the list is already a lot easier to get to grips with, partly due to the fact that the dual sabers are the fastest saber stands in the game. They pretty much do everything the crossguard saber doesn't. Your attacks are fast, there's a lot of mobility in your moveset, but you'll need that as your defense with the dual sabers equipped are lower than with any other stance. You'll have one less segment on your guard meter if you are running two sabers at the same time. This can be slightly offset by equipping the resilience perk you get from your first Jedi meditation chamber, but that also gives all other stances an extra guard segment, so it's still leaves the dual sabers as the worst. You do of course have an extra defensive option with focused parry where you hold the triangle button to automatically parry incoming attacks. But there are some downsides to that too as it takes a bit to activate so it's hard to use against attacks already coming towards you and it doesn't do anything against the unblockable red attacks. On the side of offense you obviously deal less damage than with the crossguard saber but thanks to the high attack speed and long combos your damage output is still pretty good. So if it wasn't already obvious you'll want to be quick on your feet when using the dual sabers so of course use your jump and air dash a lot too. And like I said there's a lot of mobility in the moveset that can be unlocked with skills. Unlocking backstab slash allows you to safely disengage while also dealing damage to an enemy and if you need to close the distance use uncoiled strikes for a very quick combo with a lot of range. Might need to get used to that move a little bit as it requires you to wait after your first attack before pressing the button again but the start of this combo moves you pretty far forward so a great way to close the distance. You also have some decent ranged options too with twin vipers giving you the ability to throw both sabers in quick succession which is really nice for some chip damage on bosses. And if you have trouble dealing with groups the dancing blade skill allows you to charge your saber throw so they can bounce between multiple targets. So while it definitely offers a lot I still feel like the dual sabers are not as well rounded as the saber stances in the top three. And by the way if you like the video so so far, leave a like to help us out and subscribe for way more spoiler-free Jedi Survivor tips and tricks videos. Alright, let's move on to number 3, which perhaps unsurprisingly is the Jack of All Trades, the Single Saber. Because even with all these new stances, the traditional Single Saber stance still gets the job done in pretty much any situation. Your attacks are fast and deal decent damage, you don't sacrifice any defense like with the Dual Sabers, and with some skills unlocked, there's also a lot of attacks to help you out with mobility. 
team. It's also one of the few stances that gives you access to some aerial abilities with aerial assault, giving you the ability to transition from a jump into an attack by pressing triangle or Y while in mid-air. With the aerial ace upgrade also unlocked, this attack deals a lot of damage to an enemy's guard meter, so you can use it to quickly take out weaker targets or break open the defenses of a stronger enemy. Because it requires you to jump, it also works as a pretty decent gap closer as you can double jump and dash towards an enemy and then transition into aerial assault. But the single saber has a way better gap closer, in fact I think the best gap closer in the game in dash strike. By holding block and then pressing square or X, Cal will launch himself towards a target ending with a powerful strike that again deals some decent damage to an enemy's guard meter. The range on this is really good and it's pretty quick too, so that already makes it a must get in my opinion. But there's even an unlockable upgrade called Aerial Dash Strike that allows you to use this attack while you are airborne, but it also works against targets that are airborne themselves. So those annoying jetpack troopers that like to fly out of range, well, with the single saber, you can get on top of them even while flying if you have this upgrade unlocked. So as you can see, the single saber offers you the tools to effectively deal with pretty much every enemy in the game. The only department where it struggles a bit is against larger groups, but nowhere near as much as the crossguard saber does. And besides, there's a way better tool in your arsenal to deal with groups, and that is the jewel bladed saber. Now, obviously, everyone who saw the Phantom Menace doesn't need any more reason to wield the saber stance first showcase by Darth Maul, but that is not the reason why it's on number two of our list. The first and pretty obvious reason is that it absolutely demolishes groups of enemies. You already have an AoE attack right from the get-go by pressing triangle or Y, which will throw your saber and have it loop around you, hitting everything in its path. This move can be upgraded with a second throw by unlocking the double orbit skill from the skill tree. This one is excellent for if you're having trouble with the 150 battle droid challenge on Kobo's moon, which is over here on the map by the way. Try doing it with this stance equipped and the double orbit skill unlocked to cut through the droids like a hot knife through butter. It's also the only saber stance that lets you extend the regular two hit combo into a four hit one with a badass finishing strike thanks to the endless hurricane skill, again making it the perfect tool to cut through groups. So that's everything the dual bladed saber is supposed to be good at, but it brings even more to the table. While it has less range than the single saber's dash strike, vortex dive is still a great way to move around in combat while also dealing damage. Again, we mentioned this one in our best skills video, but if you plan on using this stance, I highly recommend unlocking the skill so you can safely reposition yourself in combat. Your range defense is also insane thanks to your ability to deflect multiple blaster bolts in quick succession by simply holding the button and even your single target damage is pretty good. You see, the Gathering Tempest skill at the start of the skill tree narrows your strike so they all hit one enemy and it actually combines with Endless Hurricane to unlock an alternate 4 attack combo that focuses on a single target. So if you hold the attack button each time instead of pressing it, the entire combo will become way more useful for single target damage. So thanks to all these amazing moves, the Jewel Bladed Saber is not only excellent for taking out large groups of enemies, it's also surprisingly versatile and most importantly really strong. But the most versatile and powerful of all stances is, in my opinion, the Blaster Stance. It's fast, sitting somewhere in between the single and dual saber stances when it comes to attack speed. Your defense is on par with most of the other sabers too, but the main thing that of course sets this stance apart is the incredible range. Your regular blaster shots are already really useful for quickly picking off weaker targets from range, at least until you run out of ammo. But thanks to the flying lunge skill, which you perform by holding the square button, you have some amazing mobility to immediately put yourself in melee combat and regain some ammo. You're of course no slouch up close either with some pretty fast combos perfect for dueling single targets. But don't worry if you get outnumbered as the blaster stance offers some great tools for dealing with groups thanks to the upgradable charge shots. We covered how to get the upgrades in our combat moves and unlocks you're not using video which I will link to in the video description for if you want to know how to get them. Each of them improves your ability to deal with groups of enemies with the stun bolt being an absolute standout. These will stun your target and nearby enemies, making it an excellent tool for both offense and defense. And speaking of defense, the blaster stance offers you a unique way to counter incoming enemy attacks thanks to the point blank skill. This allows you to counter incoming attacks with your blaster by pressing triangle or Y just before an attack hits. A point blank shot bypasses enemy defenses to deal damage and blast them back, and it can even be used to counter the red unblockable attacks. So I think it's always 
worth it to go for a point blank over a dodge or parry, although you can only perform this move if there's ammo left in your blaster, which is easy enough to fix thanks to a later unlock in the skill tree. There's a special attack called Energizing Flurry that you perform by holding block and then pressing square or X. It doesn't do much damage, but it restores a lot of ammo really quickly, so think of this as your reload button when using the stance. So like I said, the blaster stance covers pretty much all bases. It is great for dealing with groups and single targets, it has some amazing defensive options, decent mobility, and of course, incredible range. Very curious to hear about your favorite stances in the comments below, and we got way more Jedi Survivor tips and tricks coming your way, so subscribe to not miss those. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and if you want, you can watch our previous one about all outfits in the game by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye.